Stampede. This is Darlene and I'm back to show you another couple of flower designs that I created using the Butterfly Punch from Stampin' Up. I had a nice feedback on the paper pansies and a lot of you have purchased this punch even though this is the old style you've purchased the newer style and I didn't want you to feel stuck in just one flower even though they make great butterflies also so I designed two more flowers to show you how to do. We're going to make this one first. What you're going to need is, the, I'm using pool party cardstock from Stampin' Up for this one. This is from the In Colors. And I'm going to just take an inch and a half wide piece by 11 of cardstock. And I'm going to punch out five butterfly shapes for the petals. So turn your punch upside down if you've not used one of these before. And punch out five. You're also going to need one leaf set from the Sizzlitz Little Leaves. You actually are only going to use one piece out of here. I, I usually get three flowers, so I use one set here, one set here, and one set here. One goes on each flower, so you really get three flowers out of one of these images. So you need one of those. And then you're going to also need the Boho Blossom Blossoms Punch. We're going to use the large shape and just, I turn it over, even though these are really meant to punch this way so they're more solid, I don't want to waste my cardstock, so if I use a little bit of strength here, I'll line up my paper here and then I'll push. And you can still do it upside down, it's just a little bit more difficult. You're going to need one of those. And then we're going to ink those. So I need, this is Lucky Limeade that I used. Cardstock and also Lucky Limeade for this. I'm using Old Olive Classic Ink. And I'm just going to sponge the edges to give it a little dimension. This is what I use to mount on the bottom. So you can see what it looks like when it's been inked and not inked. It gives it a little bit more dimension. Looks a little more realistic. I also take off one of my leaves and do a little bit on the ends of the leaves also. And again, as you can see, with the ink, without the ink. So it's your choice. I like it with the ink. Some of you have been asking me how I make these, so I just wanted to share. Lots of our demonstrators of Stampin' Up! make these, but we take the sponges from Stampin' Up! and we cut them in half and then in half again, so we get quarters like this. And then I take a 1 and 3 8 inch circle punch from Stampin' Up! and I take the color of the cardstock that my ink is, label it, fold it in half, pinch it over the end, and just staple it with the regular stapler. And then I just know exactly what color ink is on this for every one of the colors that I have for Stampin' Up! So that's just the tip that I use for the larger sponges. Sometimes, however, I will use a smaller sponge and I'll show you, I use the sponge daubers when I'm doing the petals on here because I want to be a little bit more cautious on how much ink that I'm putting. Now this is also Pool Party, it matches the cardstock but when you're putting it on you can still, it doesn't look the same, it makes it darker and I really like, even though it's a monochromatic look, it makes it really 
pretty. So it looks like it's a different color ink, but it is the matching pool party. And we're gonna take and we're gonna ink the edges on all these five shapes, front and back. The reason I'm doing the back is because once we kind of scrunch and crunch them up, some of the back will be showing on the front and you want it to look dimensional on both sides. You don't have to be real perfect on this, but I don't want to get too much. I just wanted it to accent the edges. Where the larger sponge, it's hard to get more detailed right here. So I kind of like to get the sponge dauber on these type of projects. These hold a lot of ink, so you really don't have to keep re-inking them too much. And you really don't have to do it very hard. I just dab it on. I don't do the spinny too often, but you probably would get more that way. I use them this way for just edging usually. The other flower that I'm going to show you at the second part of this video I use the sponge dauber and I ink in the center and these are really nice for that also. All right, so we've got all five done. And I take a bone folder next. You can do it without a bone folder and this step, but this is 80 pound cardstock. It's very, very heavy. It's wonderful cardstock. I wouldn't choose anything different, but I like to use this step and kind of loosen up the fibers and make it easier to scrunch. You can do it without it, but it tends to be very difficult to push in. And if you're doing a lot of flowers like I do, your hands get really sore. <coughs> All right, we're gonna take the bone folder and what I do, I'm not necessarily curling as much as I'm just pushing and using some muscle and some pressure and loosening the fibers. If they curl, that's fine too, but make sure you hold your index finger and your thumb in the center part and where, if this were a butterfly, the body of the butterfly would be. This is a weak point. It's more narrow and so I support it. When I'm doing this, flip them over and do the same thing on the other side. And you will be able to tell right away that this feels much looser. You can tell that the paper is broken down a little bit more. If you were to spritz this with water and scrunch it in your hand like some of the techniques are, first of all, this is classic ink, which is water-based, and it would not stay like this. It would all blend in and you would lose your effect. And that's why I don't do it. Also, with this being a weak area here, when you scrunch it up and you try to open it back up and it's wet, or even if you waited and you opened it back up, you can get tears in here. So I suggest you do it this way. It's a little bit longer of a process, but it's really worth the effort in the end. So you're gonna do this to all of them. And I start kind of where my finger is and go out. So you're not worrying about the center area, but you are worrying about, I'll just say mostly the part of the wing on this punch. one in 
and then we're going to begin to form the petals. Now you take your petal and again hold your finger in the same place that you did as you were molding them or softening the fibers and you're going to pinch and scrunch. It's crinkling each side. They're all going to be different and that's what you want. Do not relieve the pressure here. Make sure you squeeze here tightly. You want to support that center of the butterfly punch shape. You will see that these mold quite easily if you soften the paper with the bone folder. And you do the same process to all five. You do have the opportunity at the end when you're putting your layers together to scrunch them a little more. Okay, so we've got all five scrunched. They don't look very pretty now, but as soon as we assemble them, it'll turn into a beautiful flower. Now, I don't mark this on every one, but just for demonstration, I want to show you that I'm going to do a 1 16th inch hole punch in, in the center of each one of these right here. So this is a 1 16th inch hole punch. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to insert a brad in the middle, as you can see on our sample. If you were not going to use a brad, you wanted to use a button, you wanted to use something else, you do not have to make the hole. You can just glue each layer together. But I'm going to show you it with the brad. Now we're going to start to assemble. So I'm going to pick out the same brad. These are the Everyday Enchantment brads from Stampin' Up! And they're from the celebration that's just ended. Um, hopefully they'll have these in the new catalog. I'm not sure that's coming out for 2012, 2013. If not, this is the last that I have and I really love these. So I'm going to miss them. So you're going to put your brad through the first hole in the first layer. This one's going to be horizontal. The next one I want to put on is going to be vertical, completely perpendicular from your first layer. And these can be adjusted at any time. The next two layers I'm going to have an X. So one will go this way and one will go this way, kind of centered between the two. So you'll see there, here's the two and I'm going to kind of center it that way. You can see that fills in that void. Same on this side. I want to fill in this void. And you'll have one petal left that I always like to look at my shape of my flower and decide it looks a little bit thin up here. It always depends because you're manually crunching each one of these layers, so they'll always vary. I use this as a filler petal just to complete the shape. And depending on how I want it to look, that petal might go in a totally different direction on the next one that I do. But once you get all your petals on, spread your bread legs apart. I just start to spread it and then I turn it over this way and I press. That will seat them nice and tight here and hold your petals. Then you lay your flower down and you scrunch them toward the brad or the center 
that you have. And this is when you can adjust it. You want this scrunched a little more, just pinch it a little bit tighter. And I go through and I just kind of push them in a little bit more because sometimes they open up when you're playing around with them with the hole punch. You can adjust them to be out more. You can make them tighter. It's all a personal choice. Okay, I think he looks really nice like this. So now we're going to glue the backing piece on. I use liquid glue. I'm going to use the Scotch Quick Dry that I have laying around. I've used up all my Tombow Multi glue, so I need to use this. This works wonderfully also. Cover up your brad and hold till it adheres. And then wherever you would like to put the little leaves. Sometimes I tuck them. I look for a spot that looks like it needs a little spot to fill. I don't usually tuck them down under, but depends. If the flower shape looks a little sparse in some spot, you can put it down there, wherever you would like. So we'll put this guy right here. You can also take your bone folder, if you would like, and curl up an end, just so that looks a little more realistic. Nestle it down in there. And let it seat for a couple of minutes. And while that's drying, I wanted to show you another little added thing that I did to this one. And I put little dew drops on here. And what I did with this is I used the ultra thick embossing enamel and the melting pot. I don't know if anybody has used this before, but I really like it. And I just take a little bit of the ultra thick, or the UD they call it, but the ultra thick embossing enamel, and you work on a craft sheet. And I just take a toothpick. This is the clear. It looks like this. Pour it in and then turn it on and melt it. And it has the Ranger melting pot has a little spot for the enamel to melt, so it's the highest setting, but I just take my toothpick, get some on and make a dot, pull it away, let it cool, take another dot, looks like dew, and I think it's pretty. Set that down for a moment. Shut off my melting pot here and move it out of the way. If you have any little strings, it's almost like the hot glue gun. You can pull them off at the end. But there you go. Those are the two that I've done that are what I'm calling the ruffled petunia. It's kind of like your double layered petunia that's out now in the greenhouses. Make them in lots of different colors. I hope you'll try these. They, they're they really easy, so please don't shy away from trying them. I think you'll really like them. Use lots of different centers, change them up. You can put lots of fun stuff on here. You can leave the leaves off, whatever you would like. I hope you enjoy those. Now let's move on to the next one that I made that's more more of a subtle classic look. You're going to do the same thing with this. You only need four shapes for this one. 
whereas you needed five for the other one. You only need four. We're going to ink the inside a little different. Same color that I'm using today. I'm going to do the center. We're just going to lightly ink the centers. Go to the center of all four. Let them dry. These look these look just perfect to me. If they're a little too light for you, go back and do a second application of ink. I'm also going to take another backing. You can see on here that I did the same. It's another large shape from the Boho Blossoms. Ink those edges again. Now for these, I need a larger punch because I'm adding little handmade stamens that I made. And I made these using glitter and the Stampin' Up! White Baker's Twine. I'll be doing a video on how I made these, so keep an eye out if you don't mind and you might enjoy trying those. But this is what I'm going to show you today. Is I will mark the centers of these. And I'm going to use my crocodile instead of the 1 16th inch punch. So I need a little bit larger of a hole for these stamens to go through. So this is the 1 8th inch hole that I'm using. So you punch that hole in the center of all four petals. Now we're going to just, where you see this come together, we're just going to pinch and make a fold, make a crease on each side. And do that to all four. It's probably maybe a quarter inch with my fingers from the edge in, and it's of course going to still leave a mark, but I just pinch it quite tightly on the outside edge and just let it do its own thing as it eases up on the crease. Okay, now we're going to start to assemble. Now that you have all of them pinched at the edges, we're going to curl the edges of the petals over here. You can curl them down, you can curl them up, you can change them whatever way you would like. And you want to do that to all four of the petals. Same technique as I showed you before on some of my other flower videos that I've done. You're going to press and curl up against your finger. I just vary the way I curl them. There's no rhyme or reason to how I do it. 
You just want them to all be unique, all different. All right, so you've got all four petals pinched at the corners and also curled on all the corners, and we're gonna put them all together. So take one of your petals and lay it horizontally. The next one, put a little bit of glue on here and make that go perpendicular or vertical lining up the punched holes that you have. I usually use the uh, Scotch Quick Dry for this because obviously it quick dry after about a minute. So I'll hold it for a second because I really want an instant hold. Some of the other glues don't hold quick enough for me to assemble these. Now with this flower, it's different than the other one because we're going from the bottom up, where the other one we went from the top down when we layered it. But seeing I'm not using a brad, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna bend this up just a little bit because these are gonna go on the top. and just helps me mold them a little as I'm going, but they can be molded after if you don't feel like doing this now. So I bend them up a little bit, helps me nestle it down in and I just offset that and line up the hole and hold it again. Now this is fine with just three petals. I always put a fourth on because I like it to be real dimensional. You can also put it on the bottom. It's really up to you what you think is going to look the best. Let's put this next one on the bottom. Put a little bit of glue here. So even though I did build from the bottom up, if I think that the bottom needs a little bit more dimension, I'll do it that way. And hold it for a few moments. Okay, so I'm using my bone folder to just press this down, make sure all my glue is nice and secure. And you can see the nice shading from the ink on that. You can see why I shaded the inside. And now these are the, the stamens that I made using that baker's twine that I was sharing with you. And I use glitter on this, but you can use any other color. What I did was I used the ultra thick embossing enamel, the same things that we used for the dew drops. And I dipped my baker's twine in that. And when I pulled it out, I dipped it immediately in glitter. And this is what I got. So I'm gonna take three of these. Put these together and fold them in half. one looks a little long so I will adjust the size of it. You want them different lengths so you can offset them when you lay them in your hand. There we go. Then I twist the end after I fold it in half and that's what's going to go into the middle of this hole. Now I usually have to take my paper piercing tool or tweezers and help put it through but you're basically trying to get them to the back side pull them through and then as you get them through you can adjust the length you might like it like that. You might think these are too long. All of the stamens are different in a flower. So it's really a personal opinion. You can see as you're looking at these, the look that they're giving on the front by pulling in the back. I 
I separate my pieces of Baker's twine on the back and then I glue them down individually. And then this is going to be covered up by that same backing piece. So I like to have a little bit of the twine showing. I don't want it to just all be glitter. I want it to look like there's some stamen that's in a different place. So I'm going to leave it like that. Turn it over and I'm going to put some more liquid glue where all of these little backing loops are from the twine. Press it into the glue. Then you're going to take the backing piece Put this on to cover up your baker's twine. Turn it over. That's when I usually like to press it down with the point of, or the other side of my phone folder. Then you're not making your petals too adjusted from when you first assembled them. And then you can put whatever you would like for the leaves. So again, you can use the same, maybe the larger leaf from here, ink it and put it down at the bottom, make it a longer stem like that, an accent. Or I also um, have these leftover felt ones from a couple years ago from Stampin' Up! And they looked kind of cute on this also because it, even though it's glittery and fancy, it brought it down a little bit so it wasn't too cutesy um, with the glitter. Some people don't like so much glitter, so I brought it down and made it more of a artsy look. So those would be two different looks that you could have. You can also cock these up a little bit once they're more dry. I don't want to pull them too much because it does take a little bit more time to completely set. So let's ink this one up and put him in. give you two different looks for this and I'll bend these leaves a little Just try to find a place that I think it would look nice. If I put this in a scrapbook layout, I think I want more of the leaves to show. So I'll put it this way and then it can trail down. I'll put a couple more leaves on my layout and make them come this way on the layout and it'll look pretty that way. Okay, so there's two different looks for that. That's with the felt leaves. And with the same leaf that we used on the first one. And here are the other two. I also have one to show you that has no dew drops on it. That's just plain without, just so that you can see the difference. If you didn't want to bother with the uh, melting pot in the ultra thick embossing enamel, or you didn't want to use um, maybe glossy accents to drop it on, and you just wanted it plain. I also wanted to let you know once they're dry and completely set, if you think that it needs more ink, you can always go back and you can always add more. If you think that it wasn't quite as dark in certain areas as you wanted it to be, you can always go back and add a little more character. So I hope that was a nice idea for you. I hope you'll try it. And like I said, please don't shy away. They're fun to do. Do lots of different colors. Make them really unique and have fun with cards and scrapbook layouts. Thank you. I'll see you again. Bye for now.